Shipping from Monmouth College's Dean of Faculty, Mr. Mark Wilhart. Good morning. Good morning, Vanessa. How are you? I'm good. Good. Uh, a lot of people working outdoors in this kind of weather, yeah. so we want to make sure that uh, we say thank you to them. They don't get a choice. They, exactly. But make sure they take care of themselves. Yeah. Plenty of water and take frequent breaks if you can and, and uh, try to to stay as cool as possible yeah you know there's all the maintenance that has to be done and we know that the work has to be done but you got to take care of yourself otherwise you you can't get done what you need to get done yes uh real quick i saw the new pick this morning uh for monmouth college and that is one red m that that is going to be the biggest reddest field you can possibly imagine our end zones are going to glow from outer space um we're pretty excited though about having the field redone having the track redone there it's going to be spectacular um, it's going to be a great facility for the students, but it's also going to be great for, for all the, the fans when they come out and, and support us. Yeah, just needed that facelift. That facelift cost some serious dollar. It, it is not cheap to redo this. You know, when, when you've got the kind of facilities like uh, tennis courts or football fields where only a few con- companies across the country actually run them, you, you're in some serious competition for their time as well as what it's going to cost. So um, luckily there was a... Uh, uh, state uh, grant that is going to help us supplement that and that's going to be a a really nice thing. Um, President Wyatt's work on the Illinois Board of Higher Education helped us um, get in line for that and it's going to help us do some facilities work over the summer. So we're getting a couple roofs and and, uh, the the football field and the track and uh, some other things that they're going to help us uh, supplement and pay for. Okay. Do you remember how much that grant was? Uh, I think the total grant was three point eight million dollars. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it, it's um, it's pretty spectacular. They made it available to um, uh, private colleges across the the uh, across Illinois, and uh, so you've laid out your. It was capital costs, so it was all rebuilding and and uh, um, physical improvements to the campus. That's awesome. So it's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be really good. That's really really good news. Three point yeah. eight million. That's really good for the college. Yep. Okay, so, um, well, this, uh, this new term that's not so new anymore yeah. called AI, artificial intelligence, um, has people excited and has people anxious. Yeah. And um, we've all seen Terminator. So <laughs> we, we all have seen Terminator. We know that when Skynet goes live, right. we're all in trouble. Exactly. Uh, and so. become sentient. I, I think, you know, for higher ed, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting twist on something that has been around for a very long time. You know, when we're when we're thinking about technology in higher education, almost always the students are ahead of the faculty and the administrators. And so the students are going to go out and they're going to figure out ways to use it in ways that we uh, might not imagine. Uh, some of which we can imagine because you know immediately they're going to f- figure out ways that they can use it to help them uh, write essays or do problem sets or do those sorts of things. And I think that the difficulty is that if you stay at that level, you're always trying to punish students for using the things that are in front of them. And that's that's the wrong way of going about this. I think what we've got to do is acknowledge that AI is, is not a toy. It is a thing that's going to be there in every industry from here on out. Um, you know, I, I heard that when uh, Apple uh, came out and announced the um, Apple intelligence, so their version of AI uh, at their conference last week, uh, stocks rose $14 a share. Well, that's on the announcement. That's not even showing what the, what the AI can actually do for, for Apple users. I think we know that it's not just going to be the computers that are going to be doing this. It's going to be everything. Uh, we're all going to have to deal with AI. So from my perspective as the, you know, the chief academic officer of the college, part of what I'm worried about is not catching students when they're using AI to write papers. Um, like most things, that's not very hard to do. But it, it's, it's teaching them, okay, look, when you go on to your job, they're going to have you use an AI to help you um, build a report. Well, what are the best ways to do that? Um, And part of our job is to figure out the ways in which we can use AI in the classroom reasonably and responsibly as a teaching tool. Um, Because our students are gonna need to know it when they get out on the job. Um, I can't think of a a workplace right now that's not gonna have something that's gonna be supplemented by AI. So the industry, uh, higher ed is is struggling with this. We're, We're thinking about it on a student level. We're thinking about it on a classroom level. Um, you know, the, the various areas of, of study are thinking about how they're using it. Um, clearly, if you're in computer science, um, AI is going to be something that you're thinking about in one way. If you're in English like I am, you're thinking about it in a very different way. But we've all got to consider it. Um, at the same time, colleges and universities have to figure out 
what's their stance on all of this? Do we leave it up to the individual professors? Do we make rules for the whole college and university? Do we set some baselines? We're kind of in the wild, wild west right now. Um, you know, the schools that have lots and lots of money flowing into them have already dedicated time and expenses on, on thinking through this problem. The rest of us are thinking about it as it's coming along and we're seeing more and more of it um, invade our, our time. So it's a, it's a really interesting set of um, uh, intersecting things that we have to think about. And for, for a school like Monmouth, the most important thing is how does it affect our students? You know? Yeah, so you as an academic, yeah. especially as an English yeah. um, um, specialty in, in Irish poetry, Scottish. Scottish, poetry. Scottish poetry, so... My question, I suppose, is how do you keep the academics important to students? They should read mm -hmm. and comprehend and have rote memorization of particular items. I'm not mm -hmm. saying we all have to read Shakespeare, mm -hmm. but that was, uh, I'm a dork. I enjoyed reading Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, but now you, if you ask me to write a paper, AI can do it for you. Right. How does a student become smarter, wiser, gain the experience and knowledge because I certainly wouldn't want to go to a doctor who's just goop let me let me phrase this right just googling what's wrong with me yeah. you want them to have comprehended but yet AI has done amazing things in medicine and I think I think what you have to have is you have to have a doctor who understands the individual symptoms on individual human beings and then has an AI that says here's a couple other ways that we could go about examining you um, you know, something to supplement that human knowledge. I, I think in English, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, reading and writing skills are fundamental. And part of what's going to happen is I think we're going to see a shift. Um, we, we moved a great number of things online. We were using online tools for collaboration, you know, Google Docs, um, uh, now shared Word Docs, those sorts of things. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see um, what will feel like a retreat back to the classroom. We'll, we'll do some of those that work back in the classroom by hand uh, because part of what it allows us to do is it allows us to ensure that the students have got um, those basic skills. They're mastering them while we're all together, you know, working in groups, working with the, the, the teachers, um, ensuring that those are there and then saying to them, okay, well, you know, if you, if you now go online, you have a better base to ask the AI to do something more interesting. And it's not, you know, write my paper. It's... Um, Here's my paper on this. I'm missing something on this part. Who would you recommend? And the AI can, you know, do a little bit of the, the research for you. I know, I know there are professional researchers in my field who um, have used large language models, which the AI, AIs are based on, to help them um, very quickly skim literally thousands of articles. So what they will do is they will say, go to this database, look for articles on these three things. The, the AI will go in and skim, and then what it will do is it will produce summaries, uh, you know, from one sentence to one paragraph. And then they, what they'll do is they'll read the sentence or paragraph summaries and then realize what they want to go back and read the whole articles of. Um, it's a way of doing a first step, first skim, rather than them reading through all of the steps. I think for professional researchers, this makes sense because they have done um, a lot of that sort of grunt work um, on their own before. I think for undergraduate students, part of what we want to do is we want to teach them those fundamental reading and writing skills so that they've got those. And then, then they can turn to the AI. And then we, we work with them on how to do a prompt that actually gets you what you want. And there's tons of skills in that now. I, I've, I just read an article with somebody who has opened up um, – his own firm, and all he does is teach businesses how to do AI prompts. Hmm. Um, and, you know, he seems to be making a good living at it. So, what are we all, uh, those of us who are older? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, um, this new AI technology on our phones, what exactly does it do? Well, I, I think some of that remains to be seen. I think as they start to roll it out, um, we're going to figure out that it, it's going to, uh, supplement apps that we didn't think it was going to supplement. I know that part of the original uh, idea with this is that it would give you, a, if you're on Apple, for instance, you'd have a super-powered Siri. Or if you're on Google, you'd have a super-powered Google Assistant. So, so not only could you ask it to make an appointment, but it would do um, the initial phone calls or emails to somebody. Um, it would it would do the outreach so that you just tell it what you want it to do, and it would just goes off and does it all behind the scenes. I think probably what we're going to find out is that a lot of those utilities that are built into our phones that many of us don't use, 
Um, you know, when you get a new Android phone, it comes with lots of what's called bloatware. And often they tell you to take that stuff off. I think what happens now is that those programs are going to come AI supplemented. And all of a sudden, you're going to realize, well, the, that uh, digital security, which I know is on my phone, um, it's now checking every single second for malware, for um, phishing emails. You know, we can set it up with the emails to begin to look for all of those things. And you're going to get a, a, a hyper-powered set of notifications that are going to be able to come with this. You know, I, th I think there's some, some real positives with that. Uh, I am thinking about my own emails. Um, if it notifies me every time I get a phishing email, my phone will be blowing up all the time right. only with notifications about phishing emails. So I think we have to strike a balance between its, its amazing capabilities and our annoyances because I think it's got the ability to, to um, in, invade as well as, invade, as help. Yeah. yeah. It causes anxiety. Yeah, I absolutely. wish we could have like, you know, so Wild Wild West, that's just the day the internet started. Right. Anybody can get on and have contact with someone and that's creepy. Right. Um, it, it, and, and it can be used for good things. Like if you want to message someone to have an interview that you've never met before, but right. you have good intentions. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it is Wild Wild West. Um, I wish there was like a day a week that the computer and the phone could get turned off. <laughs> well, like a mandatory, everybody yeah, has their you know, phone off. <laughs> I, I, I'm interested in this new, ad, this new ad campaign that U.S. Cellular is running, right, which is the, the off for five. Yes. You, know, you know, five minutes, five hours, five days, whatever it is. Um, I, I think for many of us now, though, um, because of work or because of just our, our personal lives, it's really, really hard to turn off our phones and to disconnect. And it's not because... Uh, we don't know it's an annoyance or that it gets in the way. Uh, you know, I, as we're talking, I keep glancing down to my phone, which is sitting on the counter next to me, even though I know I'm on the air and I'm not going to pick up my phone. Um, it becomes a, a, a blanket of security because we know that we're connected to the, to the people and to the things that we need to be connected to. Um, I do think as the AI comes on, though, we're going to see an increase in um, the ways in which it interacts with us, and some of them are going to be really disconcerting because it's going to know things that um, you happen to mention. I, I, I can say this with having Alexa's in my house. You know, occasionally I will say something as I'm walking through the house talking to my spouse, and she'll answer me back, and then the next both of us get start getting things in our feeds, um, you know, based upon what Alexa and Amazon is listening to. Oh, I, um, it's doing you know. it no matter what. Right. One time I was recently here, I was just watching now. Well, I was watching stupid Tennessee baseball because they're still in it. And then all of a sudden on my Facebook feed, it's nothing but Tennessee yep. um, Facebook right. baseball or uh, University of Tennessee ads. Yeah. I don't want the University of Tennessee right. ads. <laughs> yeah, that is, not, that is not what you want popping up on no, your feed. No, I was just looking to see if they were still in it. <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, we've got RFD, our, our ag uh, programming we need to get to. Sure. Mark, uh, to be continued. How does that sound? Absolutely. Uh, we'll we'll check in with you again. Mark Wilhart, Dean of Faculty, Monmouth College.